Hi, I'm Dimitri. Today we're going to talk about the limits of networking. So let's dive right in. What is networking? Uh, networking, typically people think of this unpleasant exchange of meeting people and how you just need to use it to find jobs. And then after that, you know, you're done, right? That's just networking and no one likes to do it. However, networking is not really about getting stuff from people. Networking is just friendship. Um, so if you think about networking as friendship, it might be a little easier to approach networking and to do it a little more effectively. So today we're going to cover what is the limit of networking, and we're not going to dive too much into what is networking. So the first concept is Dunbar's number, which is more or less um, a study, which I'll provide a link below to probably other videos on it. You can also Google it and learn about it. However, Dunbar's number... It states that uh, an individual or human being typically can have about 150 contacts. Now, if you look at the diagram that we have, uh, typically there's three layers in Dunbar's theory. Uh, there's different amounts of people in each layer, and each layer is more or less the intimacy of each relationship. So the inner circle is, you know, your most intimate friends, people you spend a lot of time with, people you know really well. And then as you go out, those are people that you know, their acquaintances, maybe people you work with, but they're not really that close to you. So I would like to extend beyond Dunbar's diagram and Dunbar's number here and say that it starts with the world, right? You have everybody in the world in this outer layer. And inside that outer layer is actually social media. And so social media is where basically you can have like hundreds, thousands. I mean, you could have as many contacts as you want on most platforms, including LinkedIn. Um, but at the end of the day, right, there's less people in your social network than there is in the world. And again, these will change in size as you add people to your network. And then I believe inside of this social network, you actually have a Dunbar's number or this Dunbar network kind of situation where um, these are people that you actually know and interact with more closely. Again, people that are in your social network are also going to be in your Dunbar's number or your Dunbar's group here. So the difference though between these different layers is going to be the amount of time you put into it. And so I would not encourage you to run out there and try to meet 150 people and create this Dunbar's number. But what the theory is saying is that you only have so much time in life. And you can only work with so many people and remember so many names and put out the amount of effort. And in any relationship, whether it be a friendship or it be a network contact or a colleague, um, a variety of different relationships, right? Each relationship is unique and different. And so when you're networking, you might not think about it, but somebody that you know that you grew up with as a kid, maybe somebody you know you hang out with quite frequently, they are part of this network. And so you can think about it as a professional network, but at the end of the day, the professional network can overlap with your personal life and other networks. And so the more time you spend on relationships, typically the fewer you have because you have a limited amount of time. And so typically if you have a larger kind of core or the center portion is quite large, the other layers will be very small. And the reason is, is because it's hard to keep up this core, the middle portion. It takes so much time to build. And it's not necessarily bad to have a large core or a small core where you put a lot of effort into a few friends and network contacts and then have very thin kind of outer circles or outer groups of people. And now an important concept of this, especially in networking and in relationships, is that people can move fluidly between the layers. Right? And I'm sure most of you had friends growing up that you were best friends with and you were like 7, 8, 10, 12 years old, something like that. But by the time you know you went to high school, maybe you separated or by the time you hit college, maybe you went to different universities and time has more or less separated you as, as you've gone along. But that being said, a lot of times you meet new people. So in the college example, as you go on and to a different college, you and your friend might separate. You're still friends, but you don't really get along as well. You don't spend as much time learning about each other. And when you're at college, you meet a new friend. You know, and this guy maybe has the same major as you. You spend more time together now. And so the first guy kind of shifts from the very center circle, for example, to maybe the next layer out or maybe two layers out. And this isn't bad, you know. You need to build relationships through time. And so the point is, is that people can be fluid throughout this. And so it's a good idea to have that social media built 
and well understood. But again, I wouldn't feel bad if you don't contact and work with every single person. So the conclusion is on this is how big can your network be? Um, if we're talking about social media, it can be thousands. But at the end of the day, you don't really know these people. They're not really contacts, but it's easy to reach out to them because you already have, you know, like a social media connection, which is good. However, I would go with Dunbar's number. The most amount of people that you can have would be around 150, depending on your personality and who you are. However, I would say probably your inner circle of people that you work with daily, it's probably maybe around 30. Um, this is just my opinion. I've read a variety of numbers online. However, this number is 30 and this number is quite fluid. Um, again, I have a very small core circle, but there's other people around that. So my core is probably about five to 10 people. And then I have kind of another layer of like students I'm currently working with, colleagues I'm working with on other projects. And so at the end of the day, I would say your solid core is maybe around 20 to 30 people. And then probably your Dunbar number, which is 150, is probably the maximum people you can really kind of keep a track of. And then you should also be thinking you can have social networks that you can tap into. It's easier to pull people in from social networks to your Dunbar circle than it is to meet new people in the world. So in conclusion, um, Dunbar's number is 150. I would say maybe your core is 30, but it's crucial to network, you guys. You need to make friendships with people. You need to go beyond just trying to find someone to get a job. Like if you're a student and you contact me and you only care about finding a job and you want me to hand you a job, you probably shouldn't contact me. I'm not gonna be out there going, oh great, somebody wants to use me for a job, right? Not to mention I probably don't have a whole stack of jobs sitting on the side. But again, you need to build friendships. And I've had students, kind of my star pupils currently, uh, people that I really like to help because they're out there helping themselves. But at the end of the day, they give me feedback. I learn about them. They learn about me. They ask about my, you know, my wife, my family, my hobbies, what I'm working on. I talk to them about, you know, what they're working on, what internships they have, what they like about school, what they don't like about school. But at the end of the day, we build kind of this friendship. And again, this friendship is going to be different as a professional relationship than, say, like a personal relationship. And sometimes they can cross and go over and kind of interlap. So again, guys, network, network, network. Spend time meeting people. Um, it doesn't need to be always about professionalism. You can meet people at bars. You can meet people at school, at work, on the street. I run into people all the time and talk to them and exchange business cards. But again, try to network. Um, try to build your network as large as possible. But again, make sure you have a solid core so you have people you can depend on and you can work with. All right, guys. Thanks for your time and thanks for watching. And again, if you like my videos, subscribe. Um, try to help me reach my goal. I'm trying to get 100 subscribers on YouTube um, by the end of 2016. I'm thinking around like 25 right now. So any help you can give me would be greatly appreciated. And like videos, put comments in. That helps me out as well. All right. Thanks, guys.